This video discusses projectile motion. Parametric equations are often used to represent the path of a moving object. If t represents time, parametric equations give the location of a moving object and tell when the object is located at each of its positions. Rectangular equations tell where the moving object is located, but do not reveal when the object is at a particular position. That's one of the advantages to parametric equations. When an object is propelled upward at an inclination theta to the horizontal with an initial speed of v sub zero, the resulting motion is called projectile motion. Here are our formulas for projectile motion. The parametric equations of the path of a projectile fired at an inclination theta to the horizontal with initial speed v sub zero from a height h above the horizontal are given by x equals v sub zero times cosine theta times t and y is equal to negative one half g t squared plus v sub zero sine of theta times t plus h. Well, the good news is you do not need to memorize these formulas. They will be provided for you on the exams. Now, in your physics classes, I can't speak for your physics instructors. It's likely they will make you memorize these formulas. Please note that the g stated in our y definition is for gravity. So if we're talking U.S. units, gravity is 32 feet per second. But if we're talking metric, then gravity is 9.8 meters per second. You do need to know those two numbers, and you need to use the appropriate one depending on whether the information you're given is in U.S. units or in metric units. Suppose Jim hit a golf ball with an initial velocity of 150 feet per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. All right, so they're giving us our V sub zero. It's going to be 150. And they also give us our angle theta. Notice that the velocity was given in feet per second, so when we plug in for gravity, we want to be using U.S. units. In our first part, we want to find the parametric equations that describe the position of the ball as a function of time. So all we're doing is taking this V sub zero and theta, and we're plugging it into our equation and then cleaning it up as best we can. So x is equal to v sub 0 cosine theta t. Our v sub 0 is 150. Then we have a cosine of 30 degrees times t. Our cosine of 30 is on our unit circle. This has a value of square root of 3 over 2, so really we're looking at 150 times square root of 3 over 2 t. We get x to be equal to 75 square root of 3 times t. So that's the x portion of our projectile motion, our parametric equations here. Now we need to do the y. Our formula for y is equal to negative one-half gt squared plus v sub zero sine of theta t plus h. So let's fill in what we know. Negative one-half. We want to use 32 for gravity since we're in U.S. units. v sub zero is 150 sine of 30 t, and now we have plus h. h was defined to be the height that the object starts above the horizontal. Now, Jim is hitting a golf ball. Golf balls are usually sitting on the ground when we hit them, so our height here is zero. And now we do want to do a little cleanup. We know what sine of 30 is. That's just a half. So here we're looking at 150 times a half. 
negative 1 half times 32, that's negative 16 t squared. 150 times a half plus 75t, and that plus 0 has just gone. So here we are. Here are our parametric equations. We're now going to use these parametric equations to answer the other parts of this question. Part B asks us how long is the golf ball in the air? So you want to think, do we want to use the x equation or the y equation? The x equation tells us horizontal information, while the y equation tells us vertical information. They're asking how long the ball is in the air. Well, if it's in the air, it's vertical. So we need to use our y equation here. So how would we figure out how long the golf ball is in the air? Well, starting with our y equation, negative 16t squared plus 75t. So we're trying to figure out how long the ball is in the air. Let's think about it. The ball's on the ground, we hit it, it goes up in the air, and then it lands back on the ground. So to figure out the time, t, that from it starting on the ground and then returning back to the ground, we're going to let y be equal to 0 because the height is 0 when it's sitting on the ground. Letting y be equal to 0 and solving for t, we'll factor a t out leaving us with negative 16t plus 75. And then we'll set each of these equal to 0 and solve. We get t equals 0. Negative 16t plus 75 equal to 0. Solving for t. We get t to be 75 over 16. Now we need to decide whether which one of these or both of these answers make sense for the context of our application. The question is, how long is the ball in the air? Well, when t equals 0, we haven't hit the ball yet, so that can't possibly be the answer. Our other answer is t equals 75 over 16. That's a positive answer answer for time, so that makes sense for the context. Now we just need to round it to the nearest thousandth. We get t to be 4.69 seconds. In part C, we want to find when the ball is at its maximum height. We'll determine the maximum height of the ball, rounding our answers to the nearest thousandth. Well, again, they're talking about height, so that's going to be the y equation. y equals negative 16t squared plus 75t. If you look at this equation, it is a quadratic, so the graph is going to be a parabola. More specifically, it's a parabola that's pointing down, and the maximum of a parabola pointing down occurs at the vertex. So we need to find the vertex of this parabola. We're going to use our formula x is equal to negative b over 2a. Now this is what we use when we're in rectangular, so I'm going to have to tweak this a little bit since we are in parametric. There is no x our variable here is t, so we're doing t is equal to negative b over 2a. That's negative 75 over 2 times negative 16. That gives us 75 over 32. And we'll round this to the nearest thousandth. When is the ball at its maximum height? when t is equal to 2.344 seconds. There's a second question in this part C, and it is, what is that maximum height of the ball? So here we found the x coordinate of the vertex, or t in this context, but now we need to find the corresponding 
y coordinate of the vertex. So we're going to take this t value and we're going to plug it back into our y equation. To get the most accurate answer, I would be inclined to plug this fraction in rather than my rounded t value. It's just going to give us a better number. I know it's a little ugly looking, but we're using our calculator to help us so we can handle it. y equals negative 16 times 75 over 32 squared plus 75 times 75 over 32. Plugging this into our calculator and rounding to the nearest thousandth, we get 87.8. Nine, one, and our unit, since we're talking height, is feet. Part D asks us to determine the distance the ball traveled. So now we're talking about like how far forward did it go? When they talk about in golf that somebody hit the ball 200 yards, they're not talking about the up and down. They're talking about how far horizontally did it travel. So since we're talking about horizontal travel, we're going to be using our x equation. x equals 75 square root of 3 times t. So the distance while it was in flight. Well, we need to know how long it was in flight. And we found that in part B. How long is the golf ball in the air? So what we're going to do is we're going to plug that value in for t. We get x to be equal to 75 square root of 3 times 4.69. Plugging this into our calculator, we get 609.249, and our unit is feet.